All right, so this is how diseases will spread um, from person to person without um, individuals knowing about it because they don't even know that they have it, much less that they're giving their little gift to everybody else, which is, um, again, why protecting your health and getting vaccinated against different things is very important. You have no idea who you're running in contact with, somebody on a bus or, you know, you pass in the hallway that coughs on you, whatever. So how does herd immunity develop? So remember the video when we talked about this, uh, we said that herd immunity was when a bunch of people were either immune or vaccinated against something. And the few people that were not immune or not vaccinated would still be protected because everybody around them was protected. Now, again, this only works if there's only a few people that are not vaccinated or immune to it. When you get everybody that is dependent on somebody else to be immune or vaccinated against it, you're going to have a lot of people that are not covered at all. And you're going to go back to diseases coming back out. Again, like I said back in the news, when they talked about either mumps or measles, um, that's a vaccine that almost everybody gets normally, but people are starting to not get them, and therefore this disease is reemerging itself, even though it should have never appeared in, in, in the first place. So that's herd immunity. So now we're actually going to look at the pattern of diseases, so how they kind of do their thing. So a defined sequence of events usually occurs during an infection or a disease. And as we'll talk about shortly, um, infection, when an uh, infectious disease occurs, there has to be a reservoir, and we'll talk about what reservoirs are, of infection as a source of the pathogens. And then those pathogens have to be transmitted to somebody by direct or indirect contact. And then once they're um, transmitted, they have to be able to grow in that particular host. And then um, once that happens, then it has to be able to come back out of the host cell and go to somebody else. And then that's how you spread the disease. Um, so again, despite all the effects of these factors, uh, the occurrence of disease ultimately depends on the resistance of the host to the activities of the pathogen. So if you're a very healthy individual with a healthy immune system, even if the pathogen tries to get into you, your body is still going to be able to fight it off versus somebody else that um, can't. So, um, so certain predisposition, predisposing uh, factors can affect the occurrence of disease. Um, so that would make somebody more susceptible to something or would alter the course of the disease itself. Uh, so things that you can change versus things that you can't change. Um, so gender, obviously you're going to be male, female, whatever, your genetic background, you can't change that. Climate and weather, you could just, you know, move somewhere else if, if that's what's causing the disease or inadequate nutrition, things of that nature. But all of these could be predisposing factors um, that either contribute or help you not get a disease. Okay. So with the development of disease, we have different stages. Um, so once um, a microorganism overcomes the defense of the host, the development of the disease follows a certain sequence that tends to be similar whether the disease is acute or chronic. So that just means that um, regardless of what kind of disease, if it's a uh, if it's the common flu or if it's just if it's like measles or if it's tuberculosis it doesn't matter they all go through the same um 
different um, stages. So the first stage is, is the incubation period. And so this is when you first start seeing signs and symptoms, but they're very, um, they're very vague. So you may just feel bad or maybe have some general aches and pains, but that's not necessarily telling us what exactly this disease is. Um, So the incubation period is going to be determined based on how susceptible you are to that particular disease or how many infecting microorganisms are coming into your body and how resistant you as a host are. It's going to determine how long this period lasts and whether a disease actually develops or not. Then you have the prodromal period. Um, Again, early symptoms of things happening. Again, not very specific. Uh, so just very vague. Still not sure what's going on, but things are cooking within you that are about to show its nasty face to everything, which is going to be the period of illness. So the person's going to. Ex um, exhibit signs and symptoms of the disease such as fever and chills, muscle pain, uh, sore throat, gastrointestinal disturbances, whatever. And generally the patient's immune system and other defense mechanisms um, can overcome the pathogen and when that happens then you start getting better. So if the host is able to start fighting off that infection, then you get better. If the disease is not overcome or it's not treated, then the patient is going to die during this period because they're not able to um, prevent it from getting any worse. It's just going to get um, more severe each day. So if you do survive that period, yay. Now you're in the period of decline. So fever's decreasing, feelings of yucky is gonna be start going away during this phase, which may take less than 24 hours or several days. The patient is actually vulnerable to another or a secondary infection. So if you think about your immune system as like an army, protecting something. They just went through a serious battle going through a period of illness and now you have some other invader that's trying to come in. Your immune system is kind of on the weak side so you're definitely very vulnerable to getting a secondary infection versus your immune system able to fight off that one as well. So you always want to take it easy after illness because Again, you can have a secondary infection. So we have the period of convalescence, and that's where people recover, body returns to normal, or whatever was normal for them. Um, and, you know, like you got the end of the flu, you don't feel like you've been hit by anything, and um, you can go back to school or work or whatever. So during the period of illness, um, people can serve as reservoirs of disease and can easily spread infections to other people. So obviously when you're sick, you can give it to other people if it's a contagious disease. Makes sense. I have the flu. I sneeze on somebody. I give them the flu. But you can also spread the infection during the incubation or convalescence period as well. So. You may not even know you're sick yet and be in the incubation period here, but still be spreading it to people. So that's going to make things uh, worse for that particular disease. Or you're getting over it and you think all is well because I don't have a fever anymore. I'm not contagious. I'm going to go out into public. And yet you're still spreading it to people as well. So it depends on what the infection is as to uh, 